Hi. Today we're going to discuss how to negate logical statements. So we already know a logical statement is something that we can determine to be either true or false. So when you negate that, you change what's called its truth value. So in other words, if the statement was true, when you negate that, it becomes false uh, and vice versa. So f first, let's talk about how we write this symbolically. So Carlos' uh, statement is going to be Carlos likes donuts. We can write that symbolically as P. They use lowercase letters to represent statements. The same statement negated will be, so if Carlos likes donuts our statement, and to negate that, Carlos does not like donuts. Okay, and we write it symbolically as we use this tilde and then P. So that means not P. This is how we read that. So our next example, uh, it is, it's not going to rain tomorrow, so we write it symbolically as Q. If our statement is it's not going to rain tomorrow, uh, the negated statement is going to be it is going to rain tomorrow. And symbolically, it is going to be written as a tilde Q, so not Q. I do want to mention this because sometimes if you're going to be browsing online the, or to read another textbook, some textbooks or some online resources use uh, this symbol here to re represent negation. I'm just showing you that in case if you uh, run across that and you'll be like, well, why is there two d d different symbols? That actually happens sometimes in mathematics. Okay. All right, so winter came early this year. This is our statement P. So not P will be winter did not come early. This year. Again, we're not analyzing whether a statement is true or false. We just take the statement and, and negate it. So we change its truth value to the opposite. So for example, if this is a true statement that winter indeed came early this year, then this would be a false statement. Dolphins are not fish. This is our statement. So the negated statement will be dolphin are fish. So I'm sure you know dolphins are not fish, so that's a true statement. Dolphins are fish is going to be a false statement. Okay, so when you negate a statement, you will change its truth value from uh, true or to false or vice versa. Example five Madrid is the capital of France. So our negation will be Madrid is not. the capital of France. So in this case, we, we um, obviously I'm hoping everybody knows that Madrid actually is not the capital of France. So the original statement here, Madrid is the capital of France, is a false statement. Then Madrid is not the capital of France is going to be a true statement. Let's move on. Uh, it gets a little tricky when statements start with all, some, or no. And take a look at several of those examples. All dogs have tails. So what does that mean? That means that every single dog is going to have a tail. And just sticking no inside that expression somewhere is not going to automatically negate that. Like you know, some of the other examples we already saw. So to negate that, you have to acknowledge the fact that if we're claiming that all dogs have tails, then it's going to be um, at least there's going to be at least one dog that is not going to not have tail. So the way you negate that statement is going to be some some dogs don't have tails. Okay. This is very, very tricky here, especially when you start working with that. Here's what you need to understand. 
all dogs have tails means that every single one has a tail, right? To negate that statement, you need to acknowledge the fact that there's going to be at least one dog that does not have a tail. So some dogs don't have tails will, negate, will be the negation of that statement. No human has ever done that. Okay. So no humans has ever done that. To negate that, it will be some human, some humans. have done it. My apologies. Okay. So, um, some humans, I'm sorry, some humans have done it. Again, so the idea here is that uh, when we say no human has ever done that, that means there is not a single human who's done it. Um, to negate that, you have to say that uh, there is at least one human who has done it. And to write that, you say some humans have done it. What about the ones that started with some? That can be a little trickier too. Let's take a look. Some goats eat cheese. That means what? That means there's at least one goat that eats cheese. So negation of that is going to be no goats eat cheese. Okay. And then another one, um, some people are not nice. That means there's at least one person who's not nice. The negation of that will be all people are nice. Um, there is, if you look at this, you might start thinking there is some kind of a pattern that may, it may be true but uh, I like people to I like students to think about the, the uh, you know the the meaning of the statement um, to be able to correctly figure out what the negation is going to be all right uh, one other thing that helps you here is uh, understanding that a, a statement often can be rewritten in a, in a slightly different um, form, uh, but uh, it will carry the same meaning. And then negating statements um, will be a little bit easier, I think, once you understand this. So example 10, uh, a statement, all birds have wings, it's equivalent, you can write that as there is no bird that has no wings. So. We kind of went away from negating for the moment. We're talking about the equivalent meaning. So if you say all birds have wings, that means every single bird has wings. And then um, when you say there is no bird without wings, or to say there is no bird that has no wings, that would be exactly the same meaning. Example 11. Some owls eat cereal. That means there's at least one owl that eats cereal and then we write that and that has the same exact meaning. So these are equivalent statements. Some cats don't eat fish. Means that there's at least one cat that doesn't. And you write that and then you have uh, the same exact meaning. Okay, so this is just to help you understand equivalency of statements that sometimes you can have two statements written differently but they actually mean the same thing and uh, that's what uh, this is okay and we do have some more so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a look at some examples um, so this is a multiple choice question and the, the reason I wanted to do it in the multiple choice is because uh, you need to understand the language uh, very well uh, so it's asking you to do two things uh, for each one. Uh, so we have uh, we start with the statement "All kings live in castles," and in example 13, we want to figure out what 
uh, which one of these is going to be the same statement um, and uh, in example 14 which one is going to be the negation so I will give you well I suggest if you want to pause here and read them first and then try to make your determination and continue and when I tell you what the answer is um, you can go ahead and do that now uh, now what we're going to do is so you actually can t take a look at that all kings live in castles that means every single king lives in a castle and there is no king who does not live in castle that answer is going to be C okay. so remember we're looking for an equivalent meaning Example 14, now we're taking the same statement, but we want to negate that. So if we know there is uh, at all kings live in castle, then the negation will be that some do not. Right? So some kings do not live in castles. That will be option A for this one. But I do recommend that you very carefully read all the statements that uh, I gave you here so you can actually understand the sometimes some little nuances that uh, separate these uh, statements but this is how it works okay all right I have another one like that for us to practice so we have a statement some turnips are red so the uh, example 15 is asking us to write it in an equivalent way and example 16 is asking us to negate that. Again, I would suggest if you want to think about this yourself, you can pause uh, and we are going to proceed. So some turnips are red. That means there's at least one turnip that's red and that is going to be our option A, right? if we're talking about uh, writing that in an equivalent way. Um, I do want to mention one thing, you have to be careful. Some turnips are red could mean that all of them are. Some just says there's at least one, but we don't know how many. Okay? Like if you're looking to grapple or to look into a group of people and you are going to say some of you are my friends uh, if they are all your friends that statement is actually true okay, because at least one of them is your friend uh, that could mean all all right an example 16 is asking you to negate that so some turnips are red that means at least one of them is red and the negation here will be no turnips are red that is option B okay so this is how you negate logical statements and I hope you find this helpful